Yo, what up guys? Shaky Buyers here. Hope everyone's having a good day. Today we're going to be dropping this guide about progression. And I'm going to just go ahead and get into the specifics about what this video is going to be about. So I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea. This video is going to cover how I progressed my gear. And I'm going to try to help you guys out with that too. Because obviously I didn't just, you know, try to get my gear up doing random stuff. What this guide is for, it's for people who really want to progress. It's based on the fact that you want to get your gear up like super hardcore. Um, if you're a casual player, then you don't really have to pay attention to this video too much. But I still think this should be good for all kinds of players that play the game. Um, this is not by any means the best way to get your gear up. It's the way I did it and I was able to get my gear up pretty quickly when I relented. If you guys didn't know, I relented sometime last year and I didn't come back to BDO until uh, late December. And then I was able to get my gear from 170 AP to soft cap in about two and a half months with the old market. And then it took me about two months to hit 269 AP. And then it took me 273 AP really fast. And then the rest of this year has pretty much been pen dandy fails. And I'm about to hit 281 AP really soon. So, um, if there's anything I can do to help you guys progress, that is what this video is going to be about. So again, it is not the best way to get your gain, but it's something that worked for me. So if it worked for me, hopefully it can work for you. Now this video, I will be timestamping in the description and in the pinned comments of the sections I'm going to cover in this video. So what we're going to cover is a few things. I'm going to cover what not to do, how to find your own information, life skills, passive income, workshops, active grind, and then we're going to talk about uh, what kind of builds you can go for at the very end of the video. So all this stuff is going to be timestamped. If you guys want to skip to certain parts, feel free to go in the description or look at the pinned comment. Also if you guys want more guides, let me know down in the comments and uh, let me know what you're looking for and I might consider dropping like once, like our guides every here and then. I don't wanna do too many, but uh, I will do some here and there. So just like let me know guys in the comments. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and talk about what not to do. And I'm gonna tell you why this is really important. A lot of people come into BDO, you know, they, they come and do random things and then I, I've had it come in all of my time in my stream. People are like, hey, I'm only like this amount of gear score after X amount of time. And then they give me like a list of things of like why and I usually can figure it out. So bottom line, you're going to need some discipline if you want to get your gear up. Whether you like it or not, you're going to have to change how you are organized on BDL. Because unfortunately, BDL is a very heavy game. You can't just do random things and expect to get lucky, right? Like, yeah, some people get lucky, that's fine. But it's not realistic to think that that's going to be you unfortunately and you gotta be realistic about this stuff right so what I recommend to everyone uh, rouletting stop rouletting it's not gonna get you anywhere the reason why rouletting hurts you and I did it once too um, the thing is right now with the game you can make a lot of money off of grinding and when you roulette you will put yourself in a lower end grind spot which is just gonna overall stifle your progression so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are going one piece at a time, okay? Um, best way to do it is to go to one piece at a time, don't roulette, and uh, hopefully towards the end of the video I can kind of help you gauge what you want to go for in terms of gear. So that's one thing I can recommend. The second thing I would recommend is uh, re-rolling. This is really important. Um, Rerolling is another hindrance in progression mainly because you're resetting your level, you're resetting your skill points, and you're resetting your weapons. You have to get new weapons, right? And a lot of uh, these days, a lot of people have pen weapons, so relenting is a lot worse than you think it is. And it is a big deal, unless you're just pay to win, right? But um, it's, it's a big deal. And uh, me, because I re-rolled so minimally, I only re-rolled once and it wasn't a full re-roll, it was just like temporary. Um, I've been able to get things like 2.7k SP, which you might be like, oh, so what? You have all the skills, but it's like, nah, man, like when you're PvPing and you have all these absolutes, it really makes a difference, and especially when you're grinding, it gives you a wider option and it's going to broaden your playstyle, so... 
Uh, when I say don't reroll, it's really serious. So before you start grinding, I really recommend you actually be very patient. There's no rush, right? Just play every class and see what you're gonna main. And then once you figure out what you're gonna main, stick with that class all the way throughout until you get some solid gear. And then maybe you can consider another class. Rerolling too much or a lot is really gonna hinder your progression and I don't recommend it. Last advice I have of what not to do would be whatever you do guys, please pace yourself. Don't burn yourself out. There's no rush in BDO, okay? I'm telling you, if you just simply be organized and you only focus on getting your gear going up in a positive direction with like what I'm saying, like don't roulette, don't reroll, work on one piece at a time and just go at your own pace, right? You're going to see that your gear is only going to be going up instead of going down when you're playing and that's going to be a huge help to you. So uh, whatever you do, don't burn out. Don't rush, don't rush yourself, right? If you feel like you're getting tired of grinding, that's fine. Take a break for a couple of days. The, beat, the grind never ends in BDO. This game's not going anywhere and they're pushing us in the direction of getting the max gear as is right now because getting higher gear is becoming more and more accessible. So eventually it's all going to be the same thing. There's no point in rushing, right? Go at your own pace, don't burn out. Because the last thing you want to do is play this game, which is what a lot of people do. They play this game for like three months straight. They don't stop. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, dude, I just came back to BDO. Um, I haven't played in six months. And uh, what did I miss? And then it's like, yeah, now you're a gearlet. <laughs> so um, really, really make sure it's really important. You need to have fun. Go at your own pace. There's no rush. All you need to do, have some discipline and be organized about it, and you are Gucci. Alright, now let's go to the next topic. The next topic is going to be about how to get your own information, and this is really important in this game. If you're going to find this a lot in BDO, there's always going to be people misinforming you. Now, well, this is how I get my sources as of now. When it comes to, like, test about like let's say accuracy or like monster damage or something like that along those lines there's a user on reddit named big and shiny he also streams he probably releases the most accurate stuff and it's the best information so if you ever see info from him it's gucci just pay attention to it and note it and that's it if someone ever tells you something about any information always backtrack and look it up there's a lot of stuff in black desert that they hide and they don't tell us so this leads to a lot of misinformation in the community. So uh, you'll find a lot of these posts on Reddit with Big and Shiny, or you can simply go follow him on Twitch. He knows a lot about like very specific minute things that can help you a lot in the long run. Um, if you're looking for node setups and where to get your resources from, uh, this website called somethinglovely.net, also I'm gonna put in the description, is uh, where you can get a lot of this information so you can click here like resource nodes to wherever the resource comes from you can search for stuff there's trading tools as a crate calculator trade pack references when you're looking for recipes let's see well let's see how to make serendia meals for as an example totally fine instead of asking someone simply come to bdo codex you can see a whole list of recipes here like product or recipe and everything and this is why this stuff is so useful for you to know right um, if, when you're looking to how to make money in BDO, you'll probably go on the marketplace and then you'll be like, okay, what can I do to make money? Okay, well, this thing is sold out. This is selling for a lot. Let me try this. And then you go try it out. It's a lot about trial and error. When you want to learn how to make something, it's really simple. Pleb. <laughs> it's really simple, right? Uh, you just come down to product or recipe when you're looking at it and you can see here all the materials and then you can simply open them up in new tabs and then you can see everything like okay oh look this thing has vegetables right so where can I get vegetables from gathered from farming product everything you can find all this information online and there's even maps of everything too so as an example right somebody here wants to make meat pies okay well I need to get dough this comes from any of these doughs, so let's say corn dough. To cor for corn dough, I need corn flour and mineral water. Okay, corn flour. How do I get that? And then you see that it's made from processing. Corn. Where do I get corn? Obtained from node, and then it lists everything for you. It's that easy. 
come over to somethinglovely.net, find the cheapest node connection, and you're on your way to go. So it's really important to know how to find your own information. Next, patch notes are important. Don't skip patch notes. They change a lot of stuff in this game 24-7 all the time. Okay? So always make sure you read patch notes so you know what changes happen, so you know what grind areas get buffed, they buffed a certain life skill, if they change something for money, ETC. All this stuff is very important for you to know. Invinglobal.com is really good. They always post the they always post the Korean patch notes here. So if you're not from the KR servers, you can always look at updates that come ahead of time. And what that allows you to do is um, if you're playing on NA, you can prepare ahead of time for certain updates. So if, as an example, I'm going to give you guys a little tip here. Mano successors will be coming soon in NA, and they're not out yet. So you'll typically see a lot of players on NA stocking up on black magic crystals because you need the, the magical shards. Or some people might be buying them off the market, probably Blade Boquas, and uh, putting them in wagons, like the whole wagon thing. And then, voila, they, they start boosting up in price because everyone needs them when Manos comes out. And then you make a huge profit. So little things like that, I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying he's actually doing that, but I'm giving you an example of how knowing your information is really important. So always keep up to date if you really want to make serious gains. Lastly, if you want to make builds for your character, come on over to BDO Planner and you're going to see great stuff here. You can select all the items, you can figure out how much accuracy things have, and all that good stuff. You can make crystal builds. Like I said, get your information and you'll be fine. So this section is going to be about actually, you know, getting your money, right? Right? Like, how am I going to get the funds to start in this game? What should I do? What should I have? Prepare ahead of time. All that good stuff. Biggest thing I tell everyone when they come to Black Desert Online. Um, a lot of people are encouraged to just grind and like, that's it. And I'm the opposite. BDO is very much about the long run, and if you want some long-term success in BDO, very important that you invest into getting your energy and contribution points up first. In the lifespan of BDO, they have made contribution points easier and easier to get. So I typically recommend to players, if you want to make progress, you should have at least 250 energy and 300 CP. Getting CP is really easy in BDO. There's two ways to do it. There's the lazy way, and then there's the fast way. The lazy way is simply just cooking beers or doing essence of liquor, which you can look up, and then you're just turning into CP byproducts, which will take you like two weeks, two or three weeks of AFK time of AFK. So you won't even really be playing the game if you're gonna be doing that. The fast way would be actively doing your quest line and doing the Valencia quest line. Um, you spam your quest line, your main quest line, and then when you get to Valencia specifically, you do all the side quests and main quests, and you can also opt to doing Dregan CP dailies. If you do this, you can get 300 CP in approximately 3 or 4 days if you're really on about it. Um, pretty easy stuff, self-explanatory, nothing to really explain there. It's just doing quests and all the side quests you can possibly see. The reason for having high energy and contribution points is because it helps you get more workers and it helps you gather longer for when you're doing life skilling. Life skilling in BDO is pretty much your backbone um, to making money. So what I mean by typically life skilling to players, well at least to me how I see it, I see it as money that I can do in the background and it's passive. Like I can have my workers fetch something for me while I grind and I'm making money. I can have my workers run workshops for me while I grind and I'm making money. It's stuff that I actively don't have to do and I can be making money and I can go do something else. So I could be grinding, I could be sleeping IRO, could be doing something else and I'm making extra money because of that. So having high energy and CP, super important and I believe it is the fundamental backbone to making progress. Um, everyone in BDO should have an AFK life skill set up. There are the kinds of life skills you can go for in terms of active and passive. So gathering is going to be active. Actively, it'll give you a lot of cavers per hour, especially if you do something like saps. Um, what it's going to be used for are things that can go towards your workshops or just 
cooking or alchemy whatever it can help you in those areas gathering is good for so gathering would be an active form of income but it's going to boost your passive income and you can't gather all the time because it's limited by energy unless you're a full-time life skiller and you're just doing it alt by alts right but if you're someone that wants to grind like me i like to grind a lot i only gather my main character i waste my energy and like that's it then i just go back to grinding right so um it's going to help you it's honestly just going to help you like with your your workshops al alchemy cooking trading all that good stuff that's what it's going to help you for in terms of working towards the passive income 100% set up an, a life skill empire. I have my own life skill empire. I'm currently doing alchemy at the moment. Um, now, if you're someone that is interested in doing cooking, cooking at the moment with the current market prices isn't that hot with uh, selling meals. The, the, the prices crashed quite a bit. You can still do it. I'm not saying don't do it. You can do whatever you want on this game. Just you need to decide where you want to make more money at so you can get some better gear, right? So um, typically with uh, cooking, I recommend people to do imperial deliveries, which is uh, they're in city by city and you're simply just turning in a box to an NPC and you make some money. With alchemy, um, you can do imperial deliveries or you can sell to the market up to you because alchemy actually has some very high sellout to the market. Uh, that is up for you to decide. So when it comes to alchemy and cooking, I like to lump it in the same category. Don't do both. Pick one. Outside of that, you have trading. Trading is something that everyone d does. Uh, basically, you'll be processing overnight or you're processing actively if you want to be biohack TV. It's process all day but off the market. Um, not the greatest money, but it's a passive form of income that everyone actually does. Uh, if you're if you're someone who's just processing overnight before they go to sleep, you can expect about 200 and something mil per week. It's not huge money. It's very minimal. Um, so uh, that's something you can consider. Uh, outside of that, you can look into doing workshops. Workshops are really good. Uh, the way you feed your workshops is stuff that come from your worker empire, and you might be getting some stuff from gathering, such as hides or something like that. Um, now workshops are pretty passive. They're really cool because. Uh, you pretty much set a craft to work and your worker will handle the rest of it. So it'll be crafting while you're doing other things in the game. So um, that's the fundamental background to your life scaling. It's going to be cooking, alchemy, trading. You can do fishing if you really want, but I don't recommend fishing. And then uh, workshops. Those are your best way to make the money. So if you want to find information on workshops, like I said, go to BDO Codex and simply look for a recipe. Because if I tell everyone how to make money, it's just going to crash the market and you're not actually learning anything. So I hope this is helping you guys out so far. If you guys are catching my drift with this, right? Very easily just look at where you want to go in terms of your life scaling. There's plenty of options for you out there. Do some research. See what you can gather. Look up recipes. And then make a plan. Make an AFK life skill plan. Get it all set up and attack it. And you'll be Gucci. You'll be making some passive income. Now, life scaling won't take up all of your time unless you plan a full time life skill. If you plan to grind, life scaling is most likely only going to take up like 30% of your time on BDO. Alright, now I'm going to talk about uh, grinding in terms of zones. Uh, grinding is obviously really simple. You just kill mobs, run in a circle, make money, big bank, you rich now, boy. So, uh, I'm going to start from the uh, beginning of this game uh, in terms of APs. Uh, you can base this off of uh, Kudum, okay? Base this off of Kudum. So, um, if you're just coming to the game, you're going to have enough gear to start these areas. This is why I'm starting from set areas, okay? Um, if you're going to, if you're just starting off, I would farm Helms until 150 AP. I would do Gahaz until 200 AP. Um, at this zone, you also have alternatives. If you're grinding from 150 to 200 AP, uh, you have Gahaz. And polys, those are your two best in slot spots. You can also consider fogans, but I really recommend uh, gahaz and polys. Those are the two best spots right now in terms of exp and money per hour at that AP zone. Once you're 200 AP, I would say your best bet for income is KG ruins. After that, uh, KG ruins 200 AP, really good money right here. Um, there's also another option that you are able to do. Um, 
you can easily pop uh, the Keiji Gahaz Elite Rotation. Uh, Keiji Gahaz Elite Rotation is strictly for money, not EXP. Once you are about 230 AP with Kudum, Miramox. Okay, so you can do this with a full party of 230 AP players and uh, make sure they all have buffs. You gotta have elixirs. If, as long as you guys have elixirs, 230 AP is just fine for Miramox and you'll be able to pull a solid amount of money per hour and it's the greatest EXP in the game. Once you're soft cap with Kudum, so we're talking 248 now since they've added Bartali's, um, your spots are this. It's going to be Mansions, Aukman, and Histria. Those are your spots. Aukman, Mansions, Histria, Miramox are your endgame spots until you are able to get some more AP. Once you're 265 with Kudam, you get access to more spots. You'll get access to all the previous spots, and then I would say Star's End becomes viable for you. Once you are super geared, I'm talking you are 269 with Kudum, and you have like 330 DP. Sakraya Abyssal Ruins is insane money, I've heard. So, those would be all the viable grind spots if you are looking for money per hour. Alright, guys, so let's talk about uh, progressing your gear now in a respected way. Let's say you're starting off the game, you're, a lot of people's gear is going to look something like this or something similar to this. Okay, you're going to have like your Roaring Magical thing, you're going to have the Grana Oath earring, you're going to have your Ring of Power, and then you're going to have your Black Abyssal Blade. So, if you are taking everything I have told, told you in consideration, you're not re-letting, you're going one piece at a time, you're not re-rolling, you have an AFK life skill set up, you're grinding actively, and you're, you really know what you're doing, you're, you're ready, you're set, you're full on ready to go. At the current state of BDO, it is very plausible to hit soft cap in a month and a half to two months. It's a lot easier than it used to be. And even hitting things like 273 AP now only take you three and a half to four months if you're on it and you know what you're doing. So I'm going to tell you guys the way I progressed my gear when I was looking like this. And hopefully it helps you guys out and I will tell you guys my reasoning. So the very first thing I did when I was trying to get gains, um, when I was looking like the gear I showed you guys previously, Tetsarka is first. Um, if you're doing everything I told you, you're going to be flying through progression. You'll be making hella money. Zarka is very obtainable for you. Once that's done, go straight to a Tet Dandelion. Um, again, don't go for Dragon Slayer. It's not best in slot. Leave it alone. Then go for your Kudum. At Tet as well, you'll be at 198 AP with Kudum, which is pretty good. By this point, I would expect you to be level 61. You gotta make a post up. So you're gonna be 200 AP with Kudum at this point, which is solid. What are you gonna do from here? I recommend getting full boss gear. So I would get a Begs, right? Just get Begs on Tet. Don't even touch your accessories, right? Get your Dim Trade attack. Get your Aragons attack. This is an order, by the way. And then get your Griffins to attack. This is based on the DR build. Now you're going to be 300 AP with Kudum. Now, if you got some homies to carry you, dog, <laughs> you're good, man. They're going to hook you up. They're just going to take you straight on over to Miramox, and they're going to carry you because you got the DP to survive. But um, once you're looking at this gear, I recommend that you go for your Crescent Ring because they're super cheap. Now you're going to be at 208. Go for your Bassy Bell or Voltara. Up to you. You can also do either runes here. Like I said, doesn't really matter. Whatever you can get first to break your brackets. Go for your Ogre Ring. 230 now you got access to mirrors yourself and groups tongue grout earring and by this point you are going to be level 62 and your booty is soft cap now congratulations and make sure you have a new vert and now we're going to talk about new vert how do you progress from this point you're going to be progressing in terms of brackets so from here you are now able to hit 281 ap without having a pen weapon 
So that would be your most ideal situation at the moment. Um, now, in order, what you'd want to do, get a Tet Voltara, get a Tet Cressy or Tet Eye of the Ruins, go for your Tet Necklace. After that, hit a Bell's Heart. After that, two Tungrad earrings at Tet will suffice. And if you have all your Bartalis done, this is 281 AP. This BDO planner doesn't count your Bartalis, so that's why you're not seeing 281, but that's what it is. Now, once you're at this point of venomous gaming athleticism, your 281 AP, that's going to make you 269 with Kudum, which is where you can start making a lot of money. So what I would recommend at this point is... Uh, there's two routes you can go. You can go. You can start Kafferseng your armors, or you can make the money and start buying pen armors. I recommend you start buying pen armors. So go full pen. Just buy them, or you start enhancing them. Up to you. 314 DP, so about 318 at the, I believe with Bartalis. I think because they just changed. Don't quote me on that. And then you can Kafferse to 324, right? So Kafferse your way up. So we can try to cap first the helmet, let's say three levels, three levels, three levels, three levels. Once you have this DP, you can try out Sakrya Ruins, see how you feel. If you feel like it's too squishy, go up a little bit more, but you should be fine. But uh, I mean, you just should be good because if you're this much DP with, with the Kudum, I mean, you're going to be 337 and that should be good enough for Sakrya. Um, and you know, once you're here, it's all up to you. You can keep going for DP, uh, the current DP bracket at the moment. So if you're trying to PVP, uh, the bracket stops at uh, 346. So it's a lot of catfish you're gonna need and then you can just keep going for AP after that. And you're all on your own after that, guys. Up to you. Again, this is not the best way to get your gear. It's the way I did it and hopefully it helps you guys out. Maybe you guys can see why I did it this way. Maybe it makes sense to you. But um, hopefully this helped you guys out. To conclude my video, um, simply, gotta have some discipline, right? Work on an AFK life skill setup, very important, and start grinding. That's all you gotta do. You can be a full-time life skiller or you can be a full-time grinder and have an AFK life skill setup. There's no best way to do everything. As long as you get the gains, that's what matters at the end of the day. So um, I hope, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, it's not the best way to progress. It's just the way I did it. Um, didn't really see anyone else sharing what they did. So I thought I would do it. And maybe you guys could uh, get some leisure. And I hooked you guys up. Uh, thank you guys for watching today's video. If you have any questions about anything, ask me down in the comments. I'd, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, also, guys, we're almost at 20k subs. Can we hit it tonight? Hit that sub button right now if you guys are down, all right? Other than that, guys, I'm out. Hope you guys enjoyed today's upload. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitch. Join the community Discord and follow me on Twitter. Oh, and just to tell you guys again, if you guys didn't get it already, give me that sub, baby. Peace.